the Lance of Fulton County Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia, for the NFC West Division matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Atlanta Falcons. Pretty windy conditions down here in Atlanta, certainly chillier than normal at 34 degrees. And the field, the playing field, is awfully hard, which could make for some traction problems for the players. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm James Brown. Well, if a headline was to be put on today's contest, it could very easily be the best and the worst of times. The lowly Atlanta Falcons have seen Marion Campbell, unable to produce a winner here, leave for the second time as head coach. Named on an interim basis to replace him is Jim Hannafin, former head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals. Working with me today, as usual, is my partner, Ken Stabler and Snake. For those who may not know the situation here, Jim Hannafin really is in a no-win position. Without a doubt, JB, regardless of the outcome of the game, Jim Hannafin and his entire staff will not be here next year. This franchise seems to be in disarray from top to bottom. Uh, Ralph Norwood's death uh, took an emotional toll. Of course, the losing season, and in this week, the resignation of head coach Marion Campbell, I think, has taken this franchise to an all-time low. What do they do? Get some experience for their younger players, try to improve over the next four weeks, and then they have to find a head coach. Last time they went out for a head coach search, three people turned them down. Not a pleasant situation. No. Well, certainly at the other end of the spectrum are the defending Super Bowl champion 49ers, who've already laid claim to the title as the best team of the 80s. But right now, Snake, they're poised to make the challenge to the old Pittsburgh Steelers as the best team of any decade. And an awful lot of fun to watch, JB. You take Joe Montana. Joe Montana's probably having the best year of what has turned out to be a wonderful career. Jerry Rice, off to another great year, and of course, Roger Craig. Now they've gotten Rathman, their fullback, very much involved. They're tied in. Brent Jones is catching an awful lot of passes, and they're playing very good defense. The most important fact, I think, though, is the smooth coaching transition to Coach George Seifert. You combine those two things, that machine-like offense, the smooth coaching transition, and that's why the 49ers are the odd-zone favorite to get back to the Super Bowl. All right, Snake. Well, Atlanta has won the coin toss and will receive... Take a look at San Francisco 49ers. Doesn't make any difference whether they have a short work week or not. They still roll right along. Michael Kofer will be kicking off for the 49ers. And back to receive for the Atlanta Falcons. Neon, Deion Sanders, prime time. And also back to receive will be Keith Jones. 49ers definitely have chilly weather conditions to contend with here. Week 13 underway. And this one out of the end zone, so the Atlanta Falcons will start at their own 20. Chris Miller at the helm for the Falcons, starting only his 27th NFL game. The offensive line for the Atlanta Falcons. Veteran Mike Kent is the anchor there. Stan Clayton, Jamie Dukes, Bill Fralick, Houston Hoover, and Ron Heller, the former 49er player. Backs and receivers, John Settle, Keith Jones, Sean Collins and Floyd Dixon, the receivers. Michael Haynes and Stacey Bailey will be in when there's a need for extra receivers. First and 10 for the Falcons. Ball at their own 20. John Settle, the lone back. Haynes in motion. And Chris Miller goes up top, complete to Haynes. And Haynes has a first down plus plenty. So Michael Haynes down a 31-yard play from Miller to Haynes. Well, JB, they come out with their three wide receivers to one side. You see Haynes coming back across in motion. They get the ball to him quick. Now, the 49ers are going to have to be extremely careful with this team. They are down emotionally right now, and you really don't know what type team will take the field. It could be a team that will gamble, throw it all over the field. Jim Hannafin, crafty old veteran. Says he has nothing to lose. Let's go out and play, have some fun. I don't think they could have a better guy for this situation. Ball at midfield, first and 10. This is Settle. And Settle, maybe a two-yard pickup to about the 48. The San Francisco defense that Atlanta will be facing, absolutely a going ranked fifth overall in the league. Pierce Holt, Pete Kugler, Kevin Fagan. Boy, Pierce Holt's having himself a wheel of a year. Linebacking core, pass rushing specialist Charles Haley, Matt Millen. Michael Walter and Keena Turner back from injury. And the secondary, Pollard, Griffin, Ronnie Lott, Chet Brooks, Eric Wright, and Tim McKay are in on the nickel and dime defenses. 
Second and eight for the Falcons. Ball at the 48 of San Francisco. Just underway here, no score. Michael Haynes in motion. Miller back to pass, and it's batted. So Chris Miller attempting to go over to Michael Haynes had his pass deflected by Charles Haley at 6'5". JB, you know they come out throwing the ball first down their own territory. They throw the ball right there. You look at the game Monday night when the San Francisco 49ers played the Giants. That was the Giants tactic. They came out and started throwing the ball at the 49ers from the get-go and had quite a bit of success with it. Look for the Falcons to throw the ball around today. Snake, not a bad uh, option on the part of Atlanta to try to get an emotional boost going early. Michael Haynes out, Floyd Dixon in, and George Thomas in, the two receivers for the Falcons. On third and eight. And Miller throws it complete to Sean Collins. We'll see where they park it. Looks like he's going to be about a half yard shy of the first down marker. Well, as I said, they've come out slinging the ball around, throwing the ball all over the place and having some success with it. Nice job by Miller that time of getting rid of the ball before the rush gets to it. And the fans who are here want Jim Hannafin to go for it, and Hannafin again throws his hands up. Hey, what the heck? I tell you what, Jim Hannafin could make a lot of friends here today with a good effort by this team. I think Jim Hannafin is a fine coach. As I said, ideal guy for a situation like this because he's a loose, tight player's coach. Call it fourth and one out of the eye. Jones, Keith Jones, halfback option, going up top to Haynes. Incomplete. Daryl Pollard providing the coverage, and the fans want pass interference. Creative play, to say the least, though, Snake. Well, like we said, you don't know what to expect from a team that's having as much pro many problems as this team is having. They come out, they will try anything. Reverses. Here they're going to pitch the ball to Keith Jones, number 38. Run, looks like sweep, and then he throws the ball up. It's not a very well thrown ball. Underthrown, underthrown, sorry. Looks like Pollard may have interfered. That's what the fans are wanting. So San Francisco takes over. Ball at their own 41, first and 10. And a handoff to Rathman. And Rathman pulling ahead for maybe a two yard gain, stopped by John Rady. John, Joe Montana, calls him John, my goodness. Certainly his stats speak for themselves. And the offensive line, Bubba Paris, Guy McIntyre, Jesse Spolo, Bruce Collin, and Harris Barton. Back to the receivers. On second and eight, Montana. Under pressure, gets rid of it, and it's complete for the first down. Inside the 30-yard line to John Taylor. So Joe Montana escapes the rush, throws it complete. How many times have we seen him do that? That's, what, that, that's those quick feet that gets him out of all kind of troubles. It's a formation to the right, straight drop back type pass. Now watch Joe Montana. Has trouble finding someone, good coverage, avoids Casillas, avoids Andre Bruce, and then who does he find? How many times have we seen Jerry Rice work? Or, he, or those guys find a spot to sit down for Montana? And the nice thing about Joe Montana, he spreads that ball around. First and 10, ball at the 29 of Atlanta. Roger Craig in motion. Going to Craig, throws it behind him. So Joe Montana put on the ground that time by Tony Casillas. And Joe Montana in the game with some sore ribs. And we'll talk a bit more about that. The defense that Joe Montana will face, Mike Gann, Tony Casillas, and Ben Thomas. Not a very effective pass rushing uh, the down lineman, Andre Bruce, Rady, Tuggle, and Tim Green are the linebackers. And the secondary, Bobby Butler, Deion Sanders, Tim Gordon, Evan Cooper, Robert Moore, and Charles Demery in on the nickel and dime defensive packages. JB, we saw Andre Bruce rush that time. Look for those outside linebackers to come at Montana Moore today. Second and ten. Craig. And the Atlanta defense doing a good job of containing the running game thus far. Four-yard run. Well, here you see the motion man coming across. It's just a counter tray that everybody runs. Harris Barton, number 79, out front. Gets a good block. And here comes the pursuit. Ready, number 59. Casillas from behind. If they get their running game going, that's when Montana's best getting everybody involved. 
Third and six. Ball at the 25 of Atlanta. Montana complete for the first down to Taylor. And Taylor run out of bounds at about the 13-yard line by Evan Cooper. A 12-yard pickup. Montana to Taylor. Well, they clear out on the right side with Jerry Rice. You won't be able to see him clear out, but he takes everybody deep. There goes John Taylor right across the front of your screen. That deep route clears things out. Let the linebackers drop. Bring John Taylor underneath. Tom Rathen goes out. Brent Jones, Wesley Walls, two tight ends. First and ten. Ball at the 12 of Atlanta. Craig. Craig cuts back. Flag on a play. And Craig, after all of that, may have gained about two yards on a play, but there is a flag on the play. And this one will go against the 49ers. Keith Park is the referee for today's contest. You notice Joe Montana holding his hands a little chilly down there. Holding 77 offense. 10-yard penalty. Replay the first half. And that's Bubba Paris. Andre Waters running in a lateral for a touchdown, and the Eagles on top of the Giants, seven to nothing there. NFC East Division battle. The Eagles trailing by just one game behind the Giants. Yeah, that's going to be a knockdown drag out affair. Last time the Giants uh, kept Randall Cunningham in check. Be hard to do that a couple times in a row. First and 20 from the 22. Montana back to pass. Throws it incomplete over the head of Jerry Rice, but there is a flag on the play. That back at about the 25-yard line, and this one again goes against the 49ers. As George Seifert looks on. We have multiple fouls against the offense. 79 was tripping, 61 is holding. One or the other will be refused. We'll penalize one. Ten yards, still first down. You like that? Yeah. <laughs> very, very uncharacteristic of the 49er team to go down and hurt themselves, to stop themselves to, with, the, with the penalties. They've been a machine-like offense all year long. The coaching transition to George Seifert has been extremely smooth. He's put fun in the game for this team, and they're spreading the ball around. Right now, Seifert's team faced with a first and 30 ball back at the 32. This is Craig. And Craig has dropped at about the 30. Followed a three-yard pickup. We'll give it to him at the 29. Andre Bruce on the tackle that time. Andre Bruce has been under some heat here. Folks saying that he's not really adjusting at that linebacking position, but they're loosening things up for him. Well, under the system with Marion Campbell, it was kind of a read-type catch, uh, bend but don't break type of defense, and Andre Bruce seems to play better in a situation where you just turn him loose, let him play reckless. That's what they're going to try to do today. Had been benched, and uh, one of Campbell's last acts was to insert him in the starting lineup. Second and 27. Montana under pressure again. And throws it, and Jerry Rice with a remarkable catch. Down near the six-yard line, Bobby Butler looked to have had a hand on that ball, and I tell you, Rice, he never ceases to amaze me. Well, it, it, it's Rice and Montana. You know, Jerry Rice comes up with the tough catches. You're going to see it right here. They get a hand, but Montana puts the ball in a position where he can do this sort of thing. Looks like Butler can get to the ball, does, almost tips the ball, the ball's up, and then, of course, the great player makes a great play. And Snake, I spoke a little too quickly that time. Picked up 18 yards on a play, but that brings up a third and nine situation. Out of the pro set. Montana dropped by Tim Green. First sack of the afternoon by the Falcons, number four on the year by Tim Green. Well, Tim looking Green. for a little more enthusiasm. They got it there. Tim Green going to be the emotional leader today, it looks like. But here's my, they fake the draw. There's the draw. They fake the draw to try to hold people. But they get the big push on the dog. They're bringing their linebackers to try to get the pressure on Montana. It works with Tim Green. They seem to be fired up. So Michael Kofer will come on to attempt a field goal. This will be a 35-yard attempt. And 
and it's good. So the 49ers come away with something on the board, three points specifically as Michael Kofer boots it through. 49ers on top, three zip. Well, some good defense by the Falcons and some penalties by the 49ers uh, help stop them right here, force them to field goal. Watch this one right here. Here's the kick by Kofer right side. Nobody says it has to go right down the middle. Bare oh, barely hits it and goes in. They'll take it. <laughs> When things are going well, they go well. Nine plays covering 41 yards. 3.49 off the clock. And Kofi with a 35-yard field goal. Deion Deion Sanders. This kid is exciting, is fast. You know, he has that unique ability, uh, that, that thing about him, JB, that when people see that he may touch the football, it livens everybody up. He's not going to get it this time. Keith Jones has it this time from the 15. And San Francisco does an excellent job. Kick coverage. Give the credit that time to DeLong. Keith DeLong. Not a very good decade for the Falcons. Not very pretty numbers. Well, those, that graphic speaks for itself. Two playoffs tied for the worst record in the league. And, of course, fans are not going to come out and, and, and watch a team that, uh, that doesn't put a good product on the field. Snake, you're talking about the decade of the 80s, and I guess uh, ownership just lost a little patience. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk with the owner, Rankin Smith Jr., later on in the telecast to find out what his game plan. Chris Miller has another pass batted down. This one looked to have been by Pete Kugler. Well, let's check in in New York, see what Britton Musburger has for us. Here's the Eagles touchdown. Now the background, Buddy Ryan won the coin flip, decided to take the wind, and they went on the defense. And that forced a turnover. Watch for Zell, he'll lateral it to Waters, and that's the touchdown in the game. Eagles with an early lead. Back to JB. All right, Brenton, I guess you can never figure out what Buddy Ryan is gonna do. Any way they can score, they'll take it. Second and 10. Ball at the 18 for the Falcons. This is Settle. And Settle takes it across the 20 to about the 21. Call it a three-yard run by John Settle. Third-year player out of Appalachian State. We talked to John Settle yesterday, JB. And, you know, you talk about this Falcon team. They're extremely young. Sean Collins, their quarterback, and all these guys. And, and John Settle just frankly said that he's tired of hearing about how young they are, that they have to go out and do things, have to go out and make things happen. He's motivated this, this week by evaluation by whoever comes in to coach this team. He's a good, solid fullback. Well, as you mentioned before at the top of the show, that the uh, new coaching staff will take a look at the film. They'll certainly be impressed with him. Third and seven. Dime defensive package in for the 49ers. Miller throws it complete to Collins for the first down. Sean Collins across the 40 to about the 43-yard line. A 22-yard pass play by the Falcons. That's a good young, good young rookie receiver that's going to be around a while, JB. Here you're going to see the motion right in here, and you come right back into that hook zone. Miller does a good job. There goes the motion, coming across. Miller reads it and gets rid of the ball extremely quick. Right there, the pressure's on him. Finds Collins in that seam right there. Good possession receiver, Sean Collins. Sean Collins to the near side this time. First and 10, ball at the 43. Two tight end formation. Miller rolling to the right. Looking for Collins. Going up top. And Collins is tripped, but there is no flag. And again, the point there, the defender. Pollard looking for the ball as well. Second time, JB. The crowd has been yelling for interference. Here's the end of it. There you see Collins trying to get deep on Pollard, number 26. They're going shoulder to shoulder. I see that as just good coverage. Liberalized coverage rules allows for that now. Yep, everybody has a chance to go for the football. Seven twenty-eight remaining in the first. San Francisco on top, three nothing. Second and ten. No, it complete. 
near midfield to Ron Heller. Seven-yard pass play. As I said a minute ago, JB, the, 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 the Giants, the New York Giants on Monday night came out with a game plan of spread the field and throw the ball over and over. That's exactly what the Falcons are coming out here today. They think that they can do some business throwing the football. Here you see it right here. There goes Settle in motion, spreading things out, trying to stretch the defense. There's the pressure. Good block by Ken to give him time. And there he finds the receiver, number 80. Tight end has not been a position of strength for the Falcons. Tight end has been a position where they needed somebody to step forward and make some plays. Third and three. Ball at midfield. Miller complete for the first down. Jones diving to the 40. Rookie Keith Jones from Illinois. Use him an awful lot of ways out of the backfield. They'll split him out in a receiver position. They use him in motion an awful, awful lot. Screen to him. Also runs the ball. Miller does a nice job here of reading zone. Reading zone. They drop back out of there. Nobody takes the outlet guy. Good read on Chris Miller's part. Keith Jones, third round pick. And Hannafin thus far looking very, very creative in terms of his game plan. First and ten. Ball at the 39. Out of the eye. Play action to Haynes. And a long way to go to pick up about one yard, Snake. Haynes is the game breaker for the Falcons. He's the guy that has the speed, the guy that they try to make the big play with. Been suffering from a shoulder injury, a nerve type situation, James, that's really slowed him down some. And it was really interesting to hear the coaching staff say he is a vital part of their passing game. He is the guy that stretches the defense with their speed. Collins is a guy who is a possession type guy. As I said earlier, they really need a tight end to step in and do something for them. Second and nine. Collins and Haynes, the receivers, out of the pro set. Haynes in motion. Jones. Hard running. First down. Classic hard running style by Keith Jones. 13-yard gain inside the 25. You know, you have to like the intensity this team has come out with, the, the death of a teammate, the resignation of a coach, the losing season, but yet here they're playing probably the best team in the league, and they're playing awfully tough. One of the things that the writers here notice about Atlanta in practice when Hannafin took over is that there was some lighthearted laughter and banter. He's always been that kind of coach with the 49ers. They threw the I mean, with the Cardinals in St. Louis, they threw the ball all over the field. He's a fun guy to play for. First and 10. This is Lang. And Gene Lang gets maybe a yard on the play. We'll bring up a second and nine. Ball should be marked at the 24. Michael Walter on the stop. young man right there is really getting rid of the ball. I think that's a part of the game plan of knowing that for those designated pass rushers, Haley, Larry, Roberts, people like that with the 49ers, that you're going to have to get rid of the ball. You can't hold it back there. One second down. Jones in motion. Nearly intercepted as Chris Miller had his pass dropped that time by Daryl Pollard. Well, they do this off of a, off of a counter type action. There's the counter. They pull the left guard. They pull the left guard out. Stan Clayton as a personal protector. And then Chris Miller throws the ball behind Heller. Almost tipped for an interception. Andre Bruce and Evan Cooper on the sidelines trying to keep warm. A little chilly down here in Atlanta, 34 degrees. Third and 10. And Miller had the ball knocked out of his hands. Blindside pursuit by Charles Haley. So that will bring up a fourth down and a field goal situation. Well, that's the situation that the Falcons have to stay out of is those third and longs, and they bring in those guys like number 91, Larry Roberts, and, of course, their best pass rusher, number 94, Charles Haley. You've got to have good first down plays, stay out of long yardage against the 49ers. 
Excellent pursuit by Haley, the pass rushing specialist out of James Madison. A 48 field, 48 yard field goal attempt by Greg Davis. And it looks like the wind got this one, Snake. Stopped it at the goal line. No doubt you can see the ball up in the air. The wind gets a hold of it, hangs it up. 49ers hold. Three oh one remaining in the first quarter. San Francisco on top, three nothing. Thanks to a field goal by Michael Kofer. Atlanta had its field goal attempt caught by the wind. Now a little deceptive as you take a look at the flag. The wind is going from left to right, which is the direction that Atlanta was kicking in. I think the wind is really swirling around in here, JB. You look at the flag; it's not a good indicator. They got small flags on top of the goal post. Not a good indicator. I think that it can be a factor of throwing the ball deep into the wind and kicking. And Jim Hannafin into the game. Diagramming plays with his offensive line. First and 10 for 49ers. Montana, first down completion to Taylor. Taylor's got daylight. And John Taylor takes it down inside the 15 yard line. A 52 yard pass play from Montana to Taylor. Well, you're going to see Taylor right there who comes in motion from out here down and across and it gets that zone. Montana, who does it so well time after time after time. There he is in the zone. Now watch Rice come back and get a little block on Dion right about in here. Gets a little block to get him an extra six or eight yards. Nice play by Montana. The ball is marked at the 17 of Atlanta, first and 10. And off to Craig. Craig's second effort working well as he picks up five on a play will bring up a second and five and folks take a look here Philadelphia on top 14 to nothing and of course San Francisco was looking for a little help from Philadelphia one of the teams to try and clinch a wild card spot today exactly one of those teams could lose today and if they win here against the Falcons and they could clinch a wild card. Talked to that man yesterday, and he was an awful lot of fun to talk to. I think he's brought a lot of fun to this team and spreading the ball around on offense. Always been a great defensive coach. Craig in motion on second and five. Montana deep drop. Complete to Jerry Rice. Down near the five-yard line. That's good enough for the first down. A seven-yard pass play from Montana to Jerry Rice. He just has such great vision and such great awareness of where everybody is or where everybody is supposed to be. And, of course, he's such a terrific passer, very, very accurate, and off to maybe his best year of what's been an outstanding career. This thing, I tell you, the thing I like about him, he really does spread that ball around. And wants to play. Talked to him yesterday as they were practicing, and he said, no, he, he does have sore ribs, but he wanted to keep things going. Wants to play. He said, we haven't clinched things yet. We need to do that first. First and goal. Ball at the six. And the play is stopped. Delay of game. Looks like the clock got him. They are machine-like. That guy right there just knows exactly what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and on what part of the field to do it. Just an outstanding player. You talk about a record book. My goodness. Joe Montana. I tell you, Surefire Hall of Famer, he's going to have a real thick record book. His record book will look like a Sears and Roebuck catalog. <laughs> Right now, he's faced with first and goal ball at the 11. Rathman in motion. Throws it incomplete, going back across field, looking for Roger Craig. Well, Joe just trying to improvise there. Everything designed to go to the right with a little half rollout, and Joe just trying to make something happen. And Ben Thomas is down on the field, and actually looks like the Falcons came away with a player and a half injured. Ben Thomas down on the field. Tony Casillas comes up limping. We'll check their status when we come back. Well, Joe Montana coming out to his right, trying to throw the ball back across the field to make something happen. And watch Jesse Sapolu 
just level Thomas, number 72 for the Falcons, right there. Peels back, legal hit, way it ought to be done, and just levels it. Thomas on the sidelines for perhaps one play as Malcolm Taylor takes his place. Second and goal from the 11. Montana. And Montana run out of bounds by Deion Sanders as he picks back up five yards in a play. And the 49ers, of course, were upset thinking that Montana was roughed up on the sidelines out of bounds. You got to look out for your quarterback. You got to take care of your guy. Of course, Sanders has had a reputation the last three or four games and won against this very 49er team with a late hit on Jerry Rice. So they're not going to put up with it. Well, if he wants to be a talented rookie for a while, doesn't need those kind of plays. That's exactly right. That guy right there draws a lot of attention. We, this is probably a, a little bit uncalled for. Joe Montana's not going to duck his head and try to get that extra yard. He's going to run out of bounds, so I don't think there's a need for anything extra. Well, here it is right here. You make the call yourself. There he is. He's not going to duck his head and try to run over anybody. He's going out of bounds. I mean, a little push. Eh, it's not real flagrant, but I'm not sure it's needed either. And Jesse Cipolo, like all good offensive linemen, are going to take care. Third and goal. Grafton. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to hide. Andre Bruce, Mike Gann and company in on the tackle. Bill Sims to Mark Ingram and the Giants on the scoreboard trailing by just a touchdown now. First quarter action there. It's a very good New York Giant team, and you can bet that they're going to be in that one all the way. And this is as emotional as I've seen the Falcons all season long. So Michael Kofer will come on to attempt a 24-yard field goal, the second attempt of the afternoon. It's up. And his second field goal of the afternoon. So the 49ers on the strength of two Michael Kofer field goals lead the Atlanta Falcons by the score of 6 to nothing. As we get set to start the second quarter, a low-scoring first quarter, San Francisco on top, 6-0. James Brown along with Ken Stabler. And I guess back on November the 12th, 49ers administered the worst beating to the Falcons, 45-3. Falcons have something to prove. They do have something to prove. That worst beating, the 49ers had over 200 yards rushing. Uh, they're going to have to play much better here today to stop this 49er team, J.B. Right now, the Falcons are doing that, although the 49ers did hurt themselves, but the Falcons are playing with more emotion than I've seen in quite some time, and give Jim Hannafin a little credit for that. I think that's exactly who you give the credit to, is to Jim Hannafin. He knows that he has nothing to win with this game, and that the staff is not going to be here, he's not going to be here, and he's went out, and as a, the professional that he is, has prepared this team to go out and play. With all the ups and downs of the coaching profession, he said, hey, I plan to be somewhere next year. He's a professional. He's a professional, and he's handled himself that way. He knows he's not going to be here, as you said, and they're working hard to get this team ready. And Kofer kicks this one to Neon at the four. And Sanders takes it up near the 30-yard line for about a 26-yard kickoff return. It'll be first and 10 for the Falcons. Ball at the 30. Well, interim coaches really have a difficult job at best, Snake. And as you take a look back over the history of interim coaches, well, 34% only have won their first game. Well, well, the reason the guy's called an interim coach because he's picking up where somebody left off, and evidently that guy they left off didn't do a very good job. So you're dealing with a team that's already struggling, so you really can't expect a high percentage of wins from the interim coach situation. Start of the second quarter. 49ers on top by six. Falcons first and ten. Play action. Miller throws it as he's hit. Complete to Heller. First down across midfield. Well, 
tight end on this side, and that's into the corner, straight drop back tight pass. This is what they've wanted out of their tight end situation for a long time. They get Heller as a plan B guy. There's Heller making the reception right there, but then he gets injured. They thought they had the position filled with an Alex Higdon. He gets injured, and the tight end position had really not come in. There you see Miller throwing the ball under heavy pressure from their best pass rusher, Charles Haley. Ball is marked at the 48 of San Francisco, first and 10 for the Falcons. Hand off to Settle. And Settle takes it down to about the 44-yard line, call it a four-yard run. This telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the National Football League is prohibited. I think I have that understood well. Okay. Jim Bird, former New York Giants player who had an outstanding game Monday night against his old teammates. Worst uniform in the league. <laughs> what a brand new baby daughter. And Settle, looking a little confused. And Snake, it looked like it might have been a halfback option. Nothing was there. And he got nothing out of it. Looked like he may have been trying to throw the ball downfield. It's a, kind of a, a misdirection type thing. And Settle a little indecisive about what to do with it. There's that bad uniform we discussed. No, not that one. That's John. There, look at that uniform. <laughs> oh. Hadn't had time to wash it. You know, right after the game on Monday night, he hopped a plane back across country because his wife had delivered a baby girl, Ashley. Looks like he flew on the wing. <laughs> <laughs> a little tattered, huh? Yeah, a little tattered, a little frayed on the edges. <laughs> and he's probably a little tired as well, but playing extremely well for the 49ers. Third and 15, a loss of nine on a play. Ball marked at the 47. Miller back to pass. Complete to Gene Lang. And Lang is going to be maybe about three, four yards shy of the first down marker. Well, the fans are hollering, go for it, go for it, go for it. They really don't have anything to lose, but I think Jim Hannafin makes the right decision right here. The game is still very, very close, and at midfield, just kick the ball away and play defense. No doubt about it. And with that, Scott Forhey comes on to do the punting, averaging 41.2 yards per, with a net of 33.4. You look at this team coming out, playing loose, and playing with a lot of intensity on defense. I think that's because of Jim Hannafin. I hear you. Well, Chris Miller didn't like something he saw on the field, so he blew off a timeout. He'll come over and discuss it with Jim Hannafin. A little bit of a reason to uh, put on a show. Falcons yet to get on the scoreboard, but they're playing exciting football, trading the San Francisco 49ers 6-0. Well, already they've come out. They've thrown a halfback pass on fourth and one. They've come up on fourth down. Their punter has thrown for a first down. And I think the 50,000 or so here really appreciate that wide open, exciting brand of football that this guy right here is, is, is instituted. And he's got some experience that he's drawing on. First and 10, ball marked at the 29 of the 49ers. Collins in motion. Miller. Throwing for Michael Haynes a little behind him, incomplete. Coverage that time by Daryl Pollard. As we take a look at scores from around the league, still 14-7 in the Meadowlands. Green Bay, Tampa Bay. Boy, that ought to be a good one. Green Bay on top. Three inches of snow in Cleveland. And you know, we at least have one Cleveland fan somewhere here in the land. Yeah, I think our producer's kind of a Cleveland fan. 
three inches of snow up there. The dog pound will be barking. That's a that's a, a mighty important Central Division matchup. No question. Cincinnati hanging on for its playoff life there. Second and ten. Ball at the 29. Settle. And John Settle runs for the first down. There is a flag on the play. Gates everything. Seventy-eight offense holding ten-yard penalty. Replay the second down. Well, you heard that snake. We took a look at that Miami Kansas City score. Kansas City on top, thirteen nothing. It seems like that AFC title is going to have to go through Kansas City. I tell you what, Kansas City. Marty Schottenheimer has gone in there, and Derek Thomas, their outstanding outside linebacker, has got an awful lot of sacks. They're playing terrific defense. They got a big fullback, Christian Okoye, who's up there in the rushing. They're a team to be dealt with. Right now, the Falcons have to deal with a second and 20 ball at the 39. 11-24 remaining in the first half. Falcons trailing by six. John settled the lone back, settled the ball carry. And Settle gets five of the yards back, stopped by Chet Brooks. We'll bring up a third and 15. Well, if they can get John Settle involved in the game a little more, get some running going with this offense coming out, designed to throw the ball at the 49ers, it'll make them even tougher. That guy right there is a good, steady fullback. He's really blossomed as a personality his first year in the league. Very quiet, very shy. Of course, no one knew about him, and he really made a big splash on the scene. A lot more vocal. Third and 15. he was drawn off sides started just a little too quickly that time and made contact he's not putting up an argument 75 defense and that's why he didn't argue still third down getting those passing downs jb one of the ways to slow down the rush is for the quarterback to use some voice inflection give them those real hard huts those real hard counts make those guys jump so they won't be so antsy to get in there Well, you see Dixon at the bottom of your screen. It's going to be the motion. The motion's going to come across, and then he's going to get set. Gives him a real spread formation, stretches things out. You see the defensive back move up. He likes to match up outside, knows he wants to try to go for a big one. He has it, overthrows it. So Greg Davis will attempt a 46-yard field goal. Chris Miller holding. is back this time. Greg Davis is good. One of two on the afternoon thus far. Falcons trail by three. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. 49ers on top, six to three. Joe Montana has gotten his team in position a couple of times, although they've come away without touchdowns. Two Kofor field goals they've had to settle for. Now, Joe Montana Snake had been talking about he wanted to play, although the staff wanted to perhaps keep him in there just for a quarter or so. I talked to him yesterday, J.B., and he does want to play. You know, he, his ribs are sore. He said his back is fine, but he's playing so well, and the team's playing so well that he wants to keep that momentum going and really wants to play today. On the other side of the ball, the Falcons really are playing some exciting football, maybe even Sandlot football. Well, they just kind of draw them up in the dirt as they go. They don't have anything to lose, and Hannafin's throwing the ball on fourth down and faking punts, and that creates a lot of problems. Flag from the eight. Oh, it hit hard. The ball is jarred loose. Now that will make some highlight films. That was heard across the state of Georgia. 
And there's Flacker with the ball right here, and watch this. Here it comes right here. I mean, out of nowhere, right there. Bang, the ball shoots back about 10 or 15 yards. Now, there's one that'll make you sleep on your side of the bed tonight. He'll be sore tomorrow. <laughs> Gary Wilkins, the tight end, number 87, applying a wicked hit. But somehow, the 49ers retain possession. Montana hands off to Craig. And Craig doing a little fancy dancing. Coming up next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern time here on CBS, it's one of college football's time-honored and traditional rivalries, Army versus Navy. And talk about a spectacle of grandeur. Take a look. The long gray line for the Army to the White Sea of midshipman hats. So join us next Saturday for a very special college football game between Army and Navy. One second down. Play action. Montana complete to Rathman. And Rathman slips about two and a half, three yards shy of the first down marker. Bobby Butler touches him. One, one thing about their offense this year, J.B., you notice is Tom Rathman. Look at those receptions right there. Leads NFL running back, 61. That is new. They've taken their fullback and gotten him more involved in the passing game. They're also involved Brent Jones. They're tied in more in the passing game, which does nothing but open things up for Taylor and Rice. Are fullbacks accustomed to being employed offensively like that? Most of the time, your fullback in your offensive system is not your best pass receiver and is sometimes neglected in defensive schemes. Well, Rathman slid to within a yard at first down marker, making it third and one. And this is Rathman. And he's wrapped up by Tony Casillas, shy of the first down. Well, a fourth-year player out of Oklahoma, looking strong. First thing you have to do is if you're going to run the football, if you're going to run the football inside, outside, wherever, what you have to do is you've got to control that guy right there. You've got to control the nose tackle. Here he does the job on the center, number 61, Jesse Sapolo, and there it is for the loss. So Casillas is good defense. Forces the 49ers into a punting situation. Back deep, Neon, Deion Sanders talking to the crowd. Let's see if he can talk on the field. From the 36. And he does a nice job getting it back up to midfield. 39-yard punt, 14-yard high-stepping action by Sanders. I got a big Clydesdale down there in Mobile, I ride, JB. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably cover it, too. Reminds me of that offensive line I played behind. And they were awesome. The Raiders, of course. First and 10, ball mark at the 49 of Atlanta. Play action. Miller going up top for Haynes. Intercepted by Ronnie Lott. So Ronnie Lott comes up with his fourth interception of the year on that Chris Miller pass intended for Michael Haynes. James, anytime you're throwing the ball in the middle of the field, the first person you have to locate is the free safety. They're going to try to get a post down in there on the outside. As long as free safety is sitting in the middle of the field, you have to get off of that, go to somebody. There's Ronnie Lott going right back to the middle of the field, reading the quarterback, reacting on the ball. Bad decision by Chris Miller. Ronnie Lott, as he's done so often, right in the thick of things. Ninth year player out of USC, still well, playing strong. And believe it or not, that 47th interception ties a team record. Jimmy Johnson, a pro's pro. And a pro throwing to Brent Jones, Montana to Jones, up to the... Follow the 10-yard line, five-yard pickup on that play. Well, there you see Marcus Cotton making the play, number 51. They've expected great things out of Cotton and number 93, Andre Bruce. They're real high, young draft choices, but they really haven't come in and contributed the way that they expected. Some people say it's because of the conservative system that they play in. What do you think, Snake? I think that might be the case. I think those are two kids that you just turn them loose, point them to the ball, and say, go get it. Second and five. 6.45 remaining in the first half. This is Rathman. And Rathman pulling his way up to about the 15-yard line. Four-and-a-half-yard game by Rathman. We're coming to you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia. San Francisco 49ers and Atlanta Falcons. 
James Brown along with Ken Stabler. 6.24 remaining. Three points separating the teams. Frisco, only two field goals. Awful well, lot of excitement in here, you know, and I, I'm a little, really surprised about it because of all the trouble the team has had to coach the death of a teammate and that sort of thing. But these people are fired up, and I think Jim Hannafin of doing the things on fourth down, throwing the ball all over the field, has it's, it's got these people excited. Third and one. Craig and Rathman, the backs. Craig in motion. Rathman. Wrapped up by Ben Thomas for no gain. So Ben Thomas, who left the game earlier with a slight sprain back in there with a good defensive play. Well, you're going to see Ben Thomas making the play, and it's one of the one of the areas that their defense has struggled has been able to stop the run. Here you see Ben Thomas, number 72, doing a nice job. Cotton 51, flow into the ball. They've had trouble stopping the run. As a result, teams have controlled the ball on them, and that's one of the reasons that they've had their problems. I think it appears that forward progress gave the 49ers the first down. And Montana swings it out to Craig. And Craig does the rest on his own. He runs for a first down. So Roger Craig running hard. Seventh year player out of Nebraska, 15 yard run. Good safe pass to throw, backed up in your own territory. Here you're going to see it from behind Joe Montana, looking downfield, looking downfield. They let the defensive line get their penetration. Roger Craig counts like 1,001, 1,002, slides out into the flats and tries to pick up his offensive lineman. Said no matter how well they're playing, they got to stay focused. I guess the greatest comment about keeping focus, he said, in this sport, humility is just one week away. First and ten, ball marked at the 31. Montana pumps. Throws in the direction that John Taylor should have been, but wasn't. And Bobby Butler may have had something to do with keeping Taylor held up. Joe Montana wanted to go to his left first. They were going to try to give a little pump fake to try to get Deion Sanders to bite and then throw the ball in behind him. Sanders didn't bite. He looks to his other side and has nothing. Talk about being accurate, a guy who rarely misses. Well, that speaks for itself. Anytime you complete 70% of your passes today, it's, uh, it's just great, uh, great ability. On second and 10, Craig, the ball carrier. And Roger Craig, second, third, and fourth effort. Pickup of about eight yards on that play by Roger Craig. The counter trade play, JB, that everybody runs. Highest career completion percentage, Joe Montana. I mean, he's sitting atop a lot of categories, but I like that name in second place. Well, we got to get some more pressure on Montana today. Let him throw a few more incompletes where the guy can move up a little. <laughs> Third and two. 340 remaining in the first half. 49ers on top, six to three. Montana going up top for Rice, intercepted by Sanders. Not too excited little kid, huh? He gets everybody excited anytime he has an opportunity to get his hands on the ball, and here he does. What they do, all-out blitz going after Joe Montana, one-on-one -on, -one on the outside out here with a wide receiver with Deion Sanders. The heat on Joe makes Joe throw the ball. It hangs up in the air because of the wind. Sanders reacts to it. Then when he puts his hands on the ball, everybody gets excited. Tremendous athlete. 22-yard return to the 40, first and 10 for the Falcons. Miller, deep drop. Complete for the first down, and a wicked hit applied by Ronnie Lott to Sean Collins. But a 15-yard pass play and a first down for the Falcons. Well, they had 11 drop passes last week, JB, but they're hanging on today. Ronnie Lott, you see 42 right there in the top of your screen. And watch this catch by Sean Collins, number 85. Tied with Andre Risen at Indianapolis for the most receptions by a rookie this year with 40. Uh, to show you how well he's playing, Jerry Rice is a rookie, caught 49. And as you 
we've already stated a great possession receiver, rookie out of Northern Arizona. First and 10 from the 24 of San Francisco. Settle. Drop. In his tracks. Now, Snake, I'm not sure if that was a footing problem there, but uh, Settle never got started. Never really got started. It could be the footing. The field is extremely hard, they tell us, and a lot of times this kind of weather, a hard field does hurt the traction problems, as you mentioned. He's doing a nice job this year, leading NFL rookies with five interceptions. What a character, too. We talked to him yesterday, and I said, how's your first year in the league? He said, I'm tired, I'm burnt out, I need a vacation. It's four <laughs> weeks left. Going from baseball to football. <laughs> Second and 14. And the play is stopped. And it looks like we may have hit the two-minute warning before Chris Miller was able to get that play underway. 158 remaining in the first half. Atlanta at the 28 of San Francisco and trailing by three. And there seemed to be a little confusion on the field, but house cleaning taken care of. We'll be back in just a moment. And the cheerleaders legitimately have a reason to cheer right now. Well, that uniform right there looks a little cold today. And it is chilly. 34 degrees down here in Atlanta. Second and 14. his first touchdown of the season. Well, they wanted more production out of their tight end. They expected they would get it from Heller. Been hurt most of the year, but they get the matchup they want right here on Brooks. Chet Brooks, number 31. Miller throws a strike, and we've got the touchdown. And, of course, Ron Heller played with the 49ers, caught 26 passes and three touchdowns in his two years there. Scoring against his old mates. Greg Davis will attempt the point after. The Falcons are out in front of the San Francisco 49ers thanks to that 28-yard strike to Ron Heller. Miller reads the safeties right here, JB. This safety goes out, and he sees he's got the matchup for Heller on this safety right there. He reads it correctly. Watch that safety. He sees the other safety, Ronnie Lott, running out of there. He gets the matchup he wants on Chet Brooks, number 31, and throws the strike. And Atlanta goes out in front by the score of 10 to 6. Ron Heller trying to bring a little bit of stability and productivity to that tight end position as Davis boots this one. Flagler touches it. Tillman has it from the two and drop at the six. Give the credit to Robert Moore on the tackle. Three plays, 40 yards, minute 34 off the clock, culminated. 28-yard pass from Miller to Ron Heller. And, of course, the key play that set it up was the interception by Neon Dion. Yeah, all-out blitz, J.B., and he got to man coverage, but Joe hung the ball a little bit, and you do that around Deion Sanders, and he's going to break on it. First and 10 for the 49ers. Ball at their own eight with 149 remaining in the half. Montana throws complete to Rathman. Across the 10 to about the 11-yard line. Three-yard pickup. Brian Jordan on the tackle. Joe will be very conservative back here with the score the way that it is. That's right. Throw the ball on the outside to the backs. So and don't throw the ball in the middle of the field with a crowd of people. Uh, 
idea you go over and talk to the coach the offensive coaches on the sideline the idea first of all right here is to get the ball out get the ball out where you can do a few things you break one get it up midfield then you can start using the clock well it looks like montana wasn't feeling the best in the world as he goes off and steve young comes in at quarterback on second and seven this is craig and craig runs for the first down flags on a play way back in the backfield but craig driving three falcons with him to midfield but there's a flag back at the 12. And that negates a 39-yard run. Impressive run by Craig. Very impressive. That high leg kick, very strong drive determination by Roger Craig. 49ers have hurt themselves all first half with penalties. Holding 66 offense. We're going half the distance to the goal line and replay the second down. And the guilty culprit is Terry Tausch. Well, you're going to see number 66, Terry Tausch. It's going to be called, there's holding. You see his right arm. You see his right arm is outside of the left arm of the defensive man. Good call by the officials. What is that like in, uh, on a Monday, watching in film sessions and you see a 39-yard run negated by that? You watch it from under your desk. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Craig again. And Roger Craig up near the 15-yard line. Gains back about four of those yards. Well, they should spend the time out and try to at least force a punt. 33 seconds remaining as we take a look at Joe Montana. Certainly, I'm sure the staff doesn't want to do anything to risk injury to him, further injury. Uh, there was some speculation during the week. He only practiced Friday. Then, of course, he practiced some yesterday and, and absolutely wants to play, he told me. But, you know, it looks like he is having some problems. He said that his back was fine, but he had some soreness in the, the top part of his ribs. And Steve Young now getting an opportunity to loosen up that arm. Boy, isn't it something to have that kind of quarterback as a backup? Poses a lot of problems. You get a Montana who is really not going to run that much with the ball. He will run when he has to. But this guy right here presents a lot of problems of tucking the ball and running every time he has it. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, Brent and Irv will be back in the studio with all the scores and highlights. Bring you up to date on all the action from around the league. That's the NFL halftime show. Falcons spend a timeout. Now if they hold them here, I would look for them to maybe spend another timeout if they have to in order to force the punt to get their hands on the ball one more time. And this is a third and four situation for the 49ers. On the ground, Craig. And Craig run out of bounds. Looks to be just shy of the first down marker. You see where they mark it. Could be close enough. And it looks like Roger Craig got the necessary yardage. Well, I tell you, this guy never, ever gives up. I mean, a very, very consistent player. He's closing in on the all-time reception record for a running back. Very, very close to uh, breaking that record. He's been a 1,000-yard performer on the ground and just a good, solid, all-around performer. Takes pride in staying in good shape. They're going to they're gonna kneel on it, JB, and just run it out and go in and start over to second half. Nick, it looks like from what we're able to hear from the field that Joe Montana was hit pretty hard and solid in those sore ribs of his. Coaching staff will make a determination at halftime as to whether or not we'll see him in the second half. So George Seifert takes his troops off the field at halftime, and they're trailing the Atlanta Falcons by the score of 10-6. to 6. And Neon Deion Sanders has a little bit to talk about and cheer about as he goes in at halftime leading by four. Irv, we spent uh, much of the pregame show talking about Monday night taking something out of the Giants. Might have taken something out of both teams. This is a shocker to me. You know, the 49ers, uh, for the last three years, have won 19 to 21 road games. And here they're struggling against the Falcons. Well, second half still to come. Meanwhile, uh, here's what's happening to the Giants.
uh, and they were definitely softened up by the 49ers. Phil Simms early under pressure, in case you did not hear. Buddy Ryan and the Eagles won the flip. They said, we'll take the win. We'll go on defense, and quickly, they get a defensive touchdown. They've got two defensive touchdowns on the day, Or This is really a cheap one here. Phil Simms going to his right. Apparently, uh, the ball must have stuck in his glove or something, but he hits Clyde Simmons right in the stomach, and the big guy rambles 60 yards. I don't know if you want to chase a 300-pound or 60 yards, right, for the touchdown. And Phil Simms very upset. Now, here is the touchdown pass. It was Mark Ingram from the slot for 41 yards. And so at the moment, the Eagles also intercepted another pass after that, and that set up their field goal. And that's why it's 17-7. The Giants have now recovered an Eagle fumble in that game as we see the Green Bay Packers and the Buccaneers. 7-3 the score, down in Tampa. The Packers lead, and yes, it was a Don Mikowski touchdown pass. Watch this interception here by Brian Noble. Great diving play by the Packers defense, and then the key combination for the Packers. Yep, Mikowski to Sterling Sharp. This is going to be a household combination soon, Brent. Mikowski hits Sharp this time for a 21-yard touchdown. I want you to watch this. We featured Tim Harris in the pregame show. This is why he is such a superb pass rusher. He simply overpowers the tackle here to get the test of verdict. That's why he's one of the more difficult pass rushers in the NFL to handle this year. And there's a two-minute warning in Tampa now with the Packers leading 7-3. to three. All right, the big one over in the AFC, and the Bengals have a one-touchdown lead on the Browns. Bad weather in Pittsburgh. Uh, the Oilers scored on a Moon pass. Moon, of course, played for a number of years up in Canada. And bad weather doesn't affect him as much as the public thinks. It's 10-7. The Steelers lead the Oilers there. San Francisco and Atlanta, of course, the game you're watching, 10-6, the Falcons with the lead in that one. All right, the Rams in Dallas. The Rams would like to put a move on the 49ers, so they're hoping Atlanta can win. And I think Buddy Ryan and one of his buddies put that sign up. They play next week. Here is Jim Everett. This is a pretty little fade pattern for the touchdown. And now watch, you know this combination. Everett to Anderson. Flipper has caught three for 51 more yards. And that set up another touchdown. And then it was Troy Aikman's turn. Yeah, Aikman uh, comes on, uh, connects here with uh, Daryl Johnson for a nine-yard touchdown. You know, rookie, getting better and better from week to week, Brent. He looks pretty good to me. All right, New Orleans, uh, now let's check that score. The Saints and the Lions are tied at 14. Big play was his kickoff returner. Yeah, 99 yards by Bobby Morris. And this really, when you're covering a kick, really makes your heart sink. As soon as he broke that ridge at the 20-yard line, you knew he had a good chance of going all the way. And he does. He scoots along the right sideline. 99 yards for the touchdown. Uh, ties for the uh, longest kickoff return of the season. Hey, let me check a couple of other uh, AFC scores. Kansas City, some foul weather there. 16-0 all over the, uh, the Dolphins in that game. And New England, Indianapolis, 6-3. Again, a dome team. The Colts having difficulty going on the road into that cold weather. We're going to continue right after these messages from your local stations. Back here for the start of the second half here in Atlanta. San Francisco 49ers and Atlanta Falcons. As you take a look at Steve Young now, we did not have a replay of the injury that Joe Montana suffered. The Atlanta Falcons coaching staff took a look at the coaching film, and they couldn't see anything snake, but um, Montana is in the locker room being x-rayed. All precautionary measures, of course, are being taken, so it looks like Steve Young will open up the second half, and we'll bring you more information as we get it. So Greg Davis kicks off to the 49ers. Spencer Tillman from the one. And dropped at the 14 by Tim Gordon. So Steve Young will indeed lead the 49ers here in the second half, who trail by the score of 10 to 6. Now, what does Steve Young bring to the lineup different than Joe Montana? Well, of course, his, the ability to run is one thing, J.B. I don't think they'll change their offense from one quarterback to another, but what you have to worry about with Steve Young is when pass protection breaks down, he's a much better runner than, than a Joe Montana. Certainly, that means also... I think defensively, J.B., if you look at it, I think you tell your defensive ends, your linebackers, when they're rushing the passer, to take a wide outside rush for containment. Two tight end formation for the 49ers. On the ground. And Craig. Roger Craig picks right up where he left off, running for a first down, stopped by Jesse Tuggle.
Well, from the end zone, the left side of the line, Guy McIntyre, left guard, center Jesse Sapolo, doing a nice job of getting them out of territory, getting them out of trouble, backed up in their deep territory. That's the way to do it. Knock them off the ball, open some holes for Roger Craig, get out where you can get into your offense. Nice job also by Bubba Paris. First and ten, ball at the 26 of San Francisco, just underway here in the third quarter. Falcons leading at 10 to 6. Play action. Young to wrap, complete. First down. Plus plenty. Well, Drag out of bounds by John Rady. Well, as we said, they've gotten their fullback, Rathman, in, involved much more in the passing game this year. Teams that play them in zone coverages drop those linebackers out of there, and Rathman just slips out into the flats. How did that actually come about to involve Rathman as a fullback more in the offense? Well, I think, you know, you look at George Seifert, a defensive specialist, and he understands that sometimes in defensive philosophies that the fullback is a forgotten man, somebody that you may neglect. He's used Rathman because of that. First and 10 from the 46. Pitch back to Craig. Craig slips in the backfield and is dropped. Loss on a play as Andre Bruce comes in to seal it. Well, there's two. There's a guy you don't want to wake up because he is a tremendous athlete. The catch type defense they've been playing. Here's the best way for him to play is just turn him loose and say, whoever's got the ball, go get him. And there's a guy, like I said, you don't want to wake him up, get him fired up, and you've got trouble on your hands. Wesley Walls, the rookie tight end for the 49ers, is still down on the field. And that's the way Bruce has played all along. That's what he knows best. That's what he played at Auburn. He came from Auburn as a high draft choice. That's the way for him to play. Turn him loose, let him go after the ball, just like he did on that last series. Wesley Walls temporarily shaken up, seems to be okay, ran off the field under his own power. Wesley Walls was the tight end that was involved in the Lawrence Taylor incident that uh, fractured Lawrence Taylor's uh, ankle, as you saw in the NFL today, reported by our people as a, as a clean block, and I, and I think that it was. Second and 12 for the 49ers. Steve Young at the helm. Roger Craig in motion. Young going to Craig, complete. And Craig takes it to midfield. Six-yard pickup on a play stop by Bobby Butler. And the play that you were talking about, Snake, involving Wells and Lawrence Taylor. Right here, JB, you'll see Lawrence Taylor and Wesley Walls right there. You see him hook up, he hook up, he gets by Walls right there. Walls gets his head in front like you're supposed to, and I see that as a good block, just a freak accident. Seven-yard pickup on a play, call it third and five. Andre Bruce looked to have gotten to him first. Got a little help from Malcolm Taylor as well. So you said, wind Andre Bruce up and just let him go after him. That's the style of football that he plays the best from college until today, and that's what Jim Hannafin has done. They've simplified things for Andre Bruce and Marcus Cotton and let him go after the passer. The update thus far on Joe Montana, x-rays proved negative. We don't know his status for continued play yet. We'll bring that to you as soon as we find out. But good defensive play by the Falcons have forced the 49ers into a punting mode, and there he is, Neon. And Barry Helton barely gets that one away. Neon from the 22. Up to about the 32, 33 yard line. And what looked to be no room at all was turned into an 11 yard punt return. Double header action will be coming your way next week here on CBS Sports, and it all begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern. And in game one, you will see either the Falcons take on Minnesota or Dallas meeting Philly. Rematch of the bounty game. Then in game two, it's either the Giants in Denver or Phoenix and the Raiders. It all gets started at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. First and 10, ball marked at the 33. Sean Collins in motion. Miller throwing in the direction of Ron Heller and Keith Jones. Looks like it split the both of them. Trying to, trying to get that matchup with Heller again. And 
They've got the win with them, JB. And one thing to point out that all the points scored in the first half were with the win. They've got the win with them now, so they'll come out slinging it. You know, Chris Miller certainly had made it known to us earlier in the season that he wanted to be more involved in the offensive scheme and was complaining a little bit. Right, he complained about not having the ability to make some audibles, to have more audibles. We we got the other side of the story from the offensive coordinator, Rod Dowhower, and he said he's had an opportunity to do that sort of thing, but really hasn't delivered and he's made some little mistakes. Hand off to Settle. Settle. With the first down, plus three. So John Settle runs for the first down, getting the ball up to the 45-yard line. Good job by the right side of that offensive line for that 12-yard game. Good job by the right side of the offensive line, and you get that running game going. It really helps Chris Miller out with his play-action tight passes and to be able to throw the football. Detroit giving the Saints a fit. And Kansas City still blanking Miami. New England starting maybe their fourth quarterback of the year. I think uh, Mark Wilson, an old ex Raider, uh, gets the call this week. First and ten for the Falcons. Ball at the 45. 11-09 remaining in the third. Falcons on top by four. Miller throwing in the direction of John Settle. And Settle trying to give Chris Miller a target saying, hit me here, baby. I don't know. What would you say to a running back <laughs> telling you where to hit him? <laughs> well, anytime you're throwing, watch this guy right here. Watch Ken, the, the left tackle number 78. Watch his pass protection. That's where it all starts against the best pass rusher. Push him outside, push him around behind your quarterback so your quarterback can step up in the pocket. Good job by Mike Ken. 12-year veteran out of Michigan. Really admire the very professional attitude that he's maintained, especially in a losing situation. Tough times. This is Gene Lang. Gene Lang fumbles the ball, but it looks to have been recovered by John Settle. So it will go for a big gain for the Falcons, but boy, dangerous. Good job, of, good job of cutting back, cutting back against the pursuit. This 49er team, good set of linebackers, really pursue. Here you see they're pursuing, pursuing. He stops right back there, cuts back behind Charles Haley, number 94, picks up a little help from his friends. They knock it loose, and then John Settle, right place, right time. End result, nine-yard game, making a second and one as you take a look at Wesley Walls being retaped on that right leg of his. Okay, the 49ers have come in here and ran right into a buzzsaw. You really don't know what kind of team would take the field today because of all of their problems, but they are playing very intense. And Chris Miller comes over to talk it over with Jim Hannafin. 49ers have been able to manage only six points. 10-12 remaining in the third quarter. Atlanta on top by the score of 10-6. Coming your way next Saturday here on CBS, 2.30 Eastern time. It's one of the great events in college football, Army versus Navy. Some big names have always participated in that contest. We've got a good one lined up for you. Third and one. And Chris Miller recovers the loose ball and Atlanta, with a golden opportunity, squanders it. Exactly right. You're right. Squanders it. I mean, that just kills you, against a good, especially against a good team like this. Simple as just a bad exchange between quarterback and center, something that should be automatic. Scott Fulhag on to punt. Back deep for the 49ers, John Taylor. Keep in mind, the last time the Falcons came up with the trick play, Full Hake through for the first down. This time he punts it and gets a butte. Pushing Taylor back to the four. And Taylor finds a seam and turns in an excellent return up near the 35-yard line. A 48-yard punt and a 30-yard return. And Snake, while the 49ers, of course, share the best record in the league, nothing is solidified yet. Yeah, you know, you go into the playoff picture as a team, and the, the thing you want to do is you want to take care of your own business. You don't want to have to depend on other people to beat people for you to get in. You want to go out there and take care of business yourself. 
And Roger Craig certainly spoke to that very clearly coming into today's game, and he's played like it. I'm sure George Seifert would like to see a lot more productivity, the usual 49er productivity. Craig and Rath with the backs. First and 10, ball at the 32. Young, complete to Michael Wilson. Wilson, first down across midfield. So Michael Wilson displaying good second effort. Anticipating the zone, they bring the outside guy in motion. You can't see the motion, but you see the zone. See the linebackers dropping out, dropping out, dropping out, and then you hit right in that hook zone. Nice play by Taylor. I'm sorry, that's Mike Wilson, number 85. Jerry Rice to the near side. Craig in motion. Young looking for Rice. Complete. And Jerry Rice on the comeback. Forward progress. Should be marked somewhere near the 41-yard line. So an eight-yard pass play from Young to Rice. Again, almost the same type play to this side. They're going to bring Roger Craig in motion out here. And then they're going to hook Rice up right in that hook zone right there. Here comes the motion man. He's in the flats. There's the hook zone around the 10-yard line. Nicely thrown. Keep the ball to the outside. Short yardage now. Well, if you can see that, Jerry Rice has been kept somewhat in check. Three catches for 32 yards, but just as soon as you say that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think any time you say three catches and only 32 for him, you, you got him somewhat in check. <laughs> Second and two. Ball at the 41 of Atlanta. Rath has the first down. So Tom Rathman showing his versatility, banging his way ahead for the first down. Tom Rathman has really added an awful lot to this offense. Everybody knows that he has 60-something uh, catches and leads all backs with receptions, but he's still a good inside, tough runner, also a very good pass blocker. I understand he has uh, an unusual haircut. He's got that, uh, got that flat top look going for him. Talked to him yesterday out at practice. And he's a big fan of the horses. He's always been around horses as a child in the Midwest, around the Nebraska area. And, Goes to the Kentucky Derby every year and likes the horses. And nicknamed Woody, the character, of course, in Cheers, one of his favorite TV shows. First and 10 for the 49ers. Ball at the 38 of Atlanta. Young. Going up top for Taylor. He's got it. Touchdown, San Francisco. And the man he beat was Deion Sanders. picked on him a lot this year you know everybody has they're going to check him out he's a rookie he's a great player with an awful lot of ability but he's still a rookie and people are going to take their shots at him and people have had success he leads the rookies in, in interceptions but he's given up some big ones too John Taylor third year player from Delaware State Kofer on for the point after and a little too anxious down on the field I guess it's safe to say that Steve Young is uh, loosened up, too. Defense will penalize on the kickoff. Penalize on the kickoff. I talked about Steve Young being warmed up. Five for five, 92 yards and a big touchdown. Well, every team ought to have the luxury of having such a talented backup quarterback. You know, JB, when you when you turn guys like Andre Bruce and Marcus Cotton loose and have to play man to man, and that's a lot of times it's what you will do when you bring both those outside guys. You play man to man. It's a gambling type thing. It's the best way for your linebackers to play, but your cornerbacks have to be really tough too. And as a result, they get the touchdown on the man to man coverage. The point after by Michael Kofer. So San Francisco regains the lead. On that touchdown play and the point after. They do an underneath ball handling back here, then a drop back, and then a deep down through the post right there for Taylor. And watch what happens right here. Here's the play fake underneath. Watch Rathman. There comes Rathman across the play fake underneath. Makes the weak safety jump up there for the run and gives him the middle of the field. And then Taylor does a nice job on Dion. Beats him by a couple of steps easily.
think the most impressive thing to me about George Seifert is that he seems to be a good manager. He came in and didn't try to change an awful lot or appear dictatorial. Just came in and made the right little tweaks. Conversation with him last night, and that's the thing that, that hits you about, about him, is he's so even-keeled, and I think he manages people, as you said very well, has not come in and changed an awful lot of things, delegated the authority to the people to go out and coach the individual positions the way that they need to, has brought fun to this game. I think Bill Walsh is a wonderful coach, but not as much fun to play for as this guy right here, and I think it's paying off on the field. Four plays, 68 yards, 222 off the clock. And Steve Young, 38-yard strike to John Taylor. San Francisco back on top, 13 to 10. Seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Deion Sanders back. I'm sure thinking of ways to atone for that mistake. Talking to the crowd in the end zone back there to get himself pumped up. Let's see what he can do with it. He'll get a chance from his own three. Across the 20. Up to about the 28-yard line. 25-yard kickoff return by Neon Dion. And I tell you, we could hear the 49er players saying, get him, get him. I think he's made a couple of enemies on the 49er team, and they're going to take their shots if they get a chance. His late hit on Jerry Rice, I think, disturbed a few guys a couple of few weeks ago. And, of course, pushing Joe Montana out of bounds hard like that. We asked him about that in the conversation with Dion, and he kind of kind of blew it off, you know. He just said, you know, it's a, the frustration of a losing season, and he didn't think there was much to it, that the media was making more out of it than it really was. First and 10, ball at the 28. Settle. Across the 30 to the 31. Three-yard run by John Settle. some impressive teams in terms of winning percentage by decade. Cleveland at the top. Yep. Green Bay in the 60s, the Lombardi years, and of course the 70s, the Miami had the undefeated year in 72, 17 and 0. And of course, let's not leave out the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've got a whole handful of championship rings in the 70s. Second and seven. Play action. Complete to Jones. First down. So the rookie out of Illinois showing his versatility, helping the Falcons to a first down. They've gotten enough out of their running game, J.B., in order to be able to play pass, and that's what they do here. Miller comes out from under the center. There's the play fake, which holds the linebackers, and he gives Jones a time, number 38. Keith Jones, time to slip out in the flats. Good receiver out of the backfield. Can I tell you, I'm seeing an inspired Atlanta team out here. They really are playing with a lot of intensity. You know, these guys are going to be evaluated by whoever comes in here, and they're playing for the job next year. Michael Haynes in motion. Pitch back to Settle. Settle. No hold at all. Gets back near the line of scrimmage. Charles Haley on the stop. Well, if you look at the success that the Falcons have had running the ball, it hasn't been outside. This team really flows to the ball with Haley and company. Those linebackers really go to the ball. Walter, they've had their success running straight out the 49ers. And the Falcons really don't have any speed demons in the backfield to get to the outside. Exactly. Keith Jones is not a real burner, but a good player and a good solid uh, receiver. Uh, settle, not a burner, but an inside runner. So their success is running right at the 49ers. 17-10 battle up there in the Meadowlands. Eagles on top. Second down here. Miller throws complete and incomplete. Gene Lang had his hands on it for a moment, but boy, did he run into a wall. Well, there's some tough customers sitting back there. You take Ronnie Lott sitting back there in the middle, and you're going to get popped when you come into his territory. I think Chris Miller needs to take a little bit off of that, get that ball down a little bit, take a little bit off of it, make it a more catchable ball. I know that the ball has to get there in a hurry, but I think he can take a little off of that one and place it a little better. Does that come with experience? I think so. I think so. Third and ten. Ball marked at the 44. Sean Collins in motion. Miller throws complete, but far shy of the first down. That one was complete to Gene Lang. So Scott Fulhag will come on 
to punt this one away. Well, the long yardage situations will get you in trouble because it turns this guy right here loose. Charles Haley, number 94, their best pass rusher, working on Mike Kinn, and Mike Kinn does a nice job of forcing him back into the middle so that he can get the pass off. Mike Kinn doing a good job. Scott Fulhag will be punting to John Taylor for the 49ers. Gets it away, a good one, and a butte. So the 49ers will start this one from their own 20. Real nice job of Fullhag right here to playing the ball on the short hop, getting his body in front of it so that the ball doesn't get by him, and then gets the ball, gets it out of there with a good kick. Nice play. Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. San Francisco regains the lead on top of the Falcons 13 to 10 and Kenny Stable and I talked about the coaching change here where Marion Campbell retired and some of the coaching staff was very frustrated as a matter of fact uh, Jimmy Ray uh, came out in the local papers and said I find it frustrating that ownership would not consider any of the current coaching staff for a head coaching job here. Well you look what they're doing right out here now today against a very good 49er team maybe the best team in the league and here they are only three points down. They're playing an exciting brand of football. Their defense is playing with an awful lot of intensity and they've got the crowd excited and uh, I don't know. You know you think Jimmy Ray maybe his frustrations are uh, justified. As Roger Craig leads the 49ers to get another first down and of course Jimmy Ray uh, was one of the leading black candidates for a head coaching job in the NFL and certainly part of that frustration was coming up because he thought that this ownership if not giving him an opportunity here certainly would support him elsewhere and he just found the way he was being treated not the very best wasn't first class they didn't tell him he found, the staff. he found out about the situation with the staff not being hired after this year he found out through the media and I think that really upset you flags are thrown on the play Roger Craig runs for a five-yard gain. And we'll see what Gene Barth has for us. And what he has is a penalty against the 49ers. Number 89 offense, holding. Ten-yard penalty will repeat the first down. And that's Wesley Walls. 49ers have really hurt themselves today. Their, their, their point production is down, and maybe that's the reason. They've had some key holding penalties that have hurt them in their own territory, also coming into the other team's territory. Chilly afternoon down here in the Peach State. 50,000 plus on hand, and they're seeing a good ball game. Falcons trail 13 to 10. James Brown along with Ken Stable. First and 20 as a result of that penalty. Jerry Rice in motion. Young throws complete to Brent Jones across the 35 to about the 37 yard line. 17 yards gained back on the play. Well, they're going to bring Jerry Rice in motion right here all the way across. Roger Craig in the flat and in their tight end is going to hook up right in the middle right there. Young reads it very well, drop backs, gets a good pass protection. There's the hook zone, got things spread out, and Brent Jones has really come into his own. I think Seifert has done that by getting him incorporated in the passing game, and Rathman has opened up things for the outside guys. Brings up a second and three. All marked at the 37 of San Francisco. 2.17 remaining in the third quarter. And complete to Jones again for the first down. So Steve Young has looked awfully impressive in relief of Joe Montana, who of course went out late in the first half with the bruised ribs. Again, working Brent Jones, a tight end, who's been very, very productive the last few weeks. They give some motion to see what the defense is going to do, and then Jones just finds that area between Rady, number 59, there's Dion, 21, Robert Moore, number 34. Steve Young, eight for eight, 129 yards. Fifth year player out of BYU. Out of the eye formation, this is Craig, and Craig hit hard by Jesse Tuggle. Pick up a three, though. You know, this is a situation, J.B., where the Atlanta Falcons will find out a lot about each other on the field today because of all the adverse 
uh, publicity with the coach uh, resigning and the death, of course, of their teammate. And just the total situation here in Atlanta. You get to play the best team in the league today, a team that looks like they're going to go into the playoffs. And you find out a lot about each other, how you perform under those tough situations. Second and seven, ball at midfield. Wrapped along back. Three wide receivers. And Young goes to Raffin. And Raffin knocked out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. So this is close enough for a measurement. You want to wager uh, a little guess on that one? I'm saying he made it. Here's Rathman. He knows exactly where it's at, and he's diving for it. And uh, let's see, get his reaction. I think he thinks that he made it. Yep, right there, guys. That's where I went out. First and ten. <laughs> Doing a little officiating. Bill Bradley, a basketball fame, said that was a matter of knowing where you are, not even close. <laughs> Boy, the old quarterback Woody. guys from way up here pretty good. Woody from Cheers. He knew it. There he is right there. <laughs> Nickname Woody. Said I told you that I pointed to him. <laughs> 46 seconds remaining in the third. San Francisco on top, 37-yard line. So Steve Young looking extremely sharp. Well, they're going to bring Bryce in motion. He's going to stop, go back out. Roger Craig is going to come out and go to the flat, and the tight end right here is going to hook it up right in there. They're playing zone against the 49ers, and they're just picking it apart. And Snake, there was There's a very... the There's the hook right there, and it's just they're just picking it apart. I think, J.B., that they're going to have to gamble a little bit and go after the quarterback, but when you do that, you have trouble giving up the big play because you have to play man-to-man. -man. And Snake, there was a very late flag thrown on the play, and that first down will be brought back. So instead of a first and 10, it'll be a first and 20. And Steve Young looks to be limping slightly. Complete to John Taylor. And Taylor gets the first down back, plus more. So Steve Young finds John Taylor on a 31-yard pass play, takes it down to the 21 of Atlanta. Well, it's, it's what we talked about. They blitz. They bring their outside people. They play man-to-man, -man, and that right there gives that slant right in there against the man-to-man -man coverage. There go the backers. They play in the man-to-man -man coverage. There's the slant. Ball thrown on time, and then the great players make great plays, breaks a tackle, and gets them down in there in good shape. Steve Young, 10 for 10, 168 yards, and that's the end of the third quarter with the score san francisco 13 atlanta 10 we now pause for a word from your local station on the first play of the first fourth quarter steve young and there's a flag on the play as steve young was looking for jerry rice and it appears as if there was pass interference Pass interference. I'm sorry. Correction. Defensive pass interference. 41. First down. And Tim Gordon, the culprit. Well, Craig's already gone in motion to stretch the defense. He's trying to get Rice. There he comes across the middle of your screen. There's the bump prior to the ball getting there. Good call by the official. So the ball is placed the six yard line first and goal ball at the six young runs it doesn't get in gets down near the one yard line and steve young 
comes up a little wobbly. Well, Steve Young paid the price on that run as he gets up not very clear-headed. That is what he brings, you know, is that great ability to run. They're trying to get Jerry Rice out in the flat. The, the 49ers are. The Falcons do a good job of switching responsibilities, which makes makes him pull the ball down. And then there he's diving for it. Comes up a little, uh, limping around a little bit. Doesn't look uh, full speed. So Steve Young still at the helm. And there's Steve Bono, the third quarterback on the roster. Second and goal. Ball at the one. And Young goes over, and there's a signal for the touchdown, San Francisco. Well, Steve Young just going to do it himself, just behind the big offensive line from a yard out with the quarterback sneak from for the touchdown and Steve Young has really come in and done a, a very good job. This system is one that everybody runs it so well that whoever the quarterback is, if he reads things correctly, you're going to be able to generate offense. Uh, a good example, San Francisco had 188 yards in the first half. They have 179 in the third quarter. Young, something like 10 for 10, playing very well. And Michael Cobra's point after is good. San Francisco expands the lead. Joe Montana went out late in the first half, bruised ribs, x-rays proved negative. But the 49ers have not missed a beat. Steve Young has come on. You see the numbers there, absolutely superb. And John Taylor and Snake, I guess the key there is that San Francisco is not only deep, but talented. Deep and talented. You know, Jerry Rice makes a big play today. They could do things maybe to take him away a little bit. And then Taylor has the big day. Montana goes down. And their backup quarterback comes in and goes 10 for 10. Deep, talented team. Today it's the offense. Certainly on Monday night it was a defense. Deep players again. Matt Millen coming on playing well. Jim Burt. They've done a good job, as you say, of bringing in people, of, of, of spending the money that it takes to bring in the talented people. They've got the highest payroll in the league, but there's the proof in the pudding is on the field. Very, very good football team. $19.9 million. Mr. DeBartolo says, hey, if they can help the team and I have to pay them, I trust my staff. They know what they're talking about. Two good examples that you make. Matt Millen from the Raiders. They get rid of him. He comes in, solidifies the middle of the linebacking core. And then Michael Carter goes down. What do they do? They go get uh, Jim Burt to come in, and, and he helps that situation along with Holt. And Sanders won't get a chance to do anything with this. And Stolper puts that one deep in the end zone. Coming off of a Monday night performance that uh, got him an awful lot of recognition. Four sacks in that game and has really helped solidify that middle since uh, Michael Carter's injury. A lot of folks didn't want to take a chance on him because he was a little too old in college. He's playing like a veteran now. Miller back on first down. Throws it a little too high for Keith Jones. Will make it a second and ten situation. So it seems like San Francisco has adjusted here in the second half to the wrinkles that Atlanta was trying to throw at him in the first half. The good teams do that, too. The good teams go in at half, and that guy right there, the defensive specialist, defensive coordinator for years under Bill Walsh, and they will go in and they will find out what teams are doing from what formations on what part of the field, go in and make their adjustments, and they paid off in the second half here. And it's ruled an incomplete. And there is a flag back in the backfield. Holding. 
Dan Clayton. First time I heard uh, one of the coaching staff of the Falcons say that maybe Chris Miller isn't as tough-minded as he needs to be. Well, the mental toughness, I think, has been questioned. And what they mean by mental toughness is when they, you, you get knocked around a lot. You've got to get back up, get in there, face that rush, take control of the team, motivate your teammates, and get in there and do that. And maybe that will come with some more experience. Well, it throws it complete to Floyd Dixon. The question is whether or not he was over the line of scrimmage. Two flags on a play. And I don't see Chris Miller putting up much of an argument either. He tried. Well, he thought he would step away with one. Illegal forward pass. The quarterback threw the ball from beyond the line. That's a five-yard penalty and lost it down. Fourth down. Again, maybe that mental toughness you go back to, JB. Maybe it's understanding that type situation, not making that young mistake and, and uh, just growing from it. And I think time will probably cure that with Chris Miller. What sense do you get of how the Falcon players respond to Chris Miller? I think they respond to him very well. I think that they all understand that they are an extremely young team at the skill positions with Collins and with Michael Haynes and with Settle and with Miller that they have to grow together. But I think they respond very well to him, and I think he's got a long, bright future. Scott Fulhay going to do the punting. At midfield, John Taylor takes it after signaling for the fair catch. A 29-yard punt only. Going into that swirling wind. In college football next Saturday here on CBS, it'll be the 90th meeting between the service academies, Army and Navy. 41 games apiece with seven ties. That'll be coming your way next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time, right here on CBS. How do you think you would have done in a military uniform? Are you talking to me? <laughs> I always had trouble staying in step. <laughs> On first down, the handoff to Roger Craig, and Craig with another first down. Roger Craig continuing to look impressive. Cowboys and Rams, let's get an update from Brent. But JB, let's show you the touchdown by the Dallas Cowboys that has the Rams lead a little shaky right now. Great run by Dixon after the catch. 35 yards for the score, and it is 21-17, and the Cowboys are threatening again. Down to the 10. Back to JB. Well, the, the Rams are lurking around down there in second place, a couple of games behind these 49ers, and I think they play next week, so I know the 49ers will be watching Monday night when they play. Meanwhile, Steve Young, back to pass, throws incomplete to Brent Jones, who actually should have caught that one. And believe it or not, the first missed pass. First incomplete. My gosh, I can't stand it. You know, it's the, it's the system and their players, of course. You know, you can't take anything away from Young, but they play in a system that's just filtered with talented players. And it's a system that is very good at controlling the ball. It has great big play capabilities. They're able to run the ball, and they protect their quarterback. Very good system. Bill Walsh laid the foundation for this, and that man right there, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. He has just managed people and done a great job of it. First head coach was a San Francisco native. Second and ten. Craig. Boy, how can you not like his running style? Oh, I know. He just makes something out of nothing more times, you know. He's got that great determination and leg drive. He's in terrific shape. And, you know, you can't ask for a better player back there than that guy right there. Four-yard gain on that play. Low running style. Great receiver. We mentioned earlier in the telecast that he is closing in on the all-time record for as a receiver for running back. Walter Payton did that over a course of 12 or 13 years. Tony Graub Galbraith, a long career. Roger Craig has done that in a period of about six or seven years. Third and six. Ball at the 34. First down. Plus a whole lot more. Robert Moore finally stopped him. Well, it's Bruce Colley, number 69, and 
Of course, number 78, Steve Wallace, a little counter play. See, there's the counter by Craig. The off guard, McIntyre, 62 pulls, cuts off McIntyre's block, and then look at that high leg kick for the first down. 13 carries for 81 yards by Roger Craig. And the updated report on Joe Montana, bruised ribs. You don't see him out here on the sidelines because uh, they want to try to keep him warm. On first down, Roger Craig again. You know, Kenny, in basketball, on the playground, we had an expression, milk it until it runs dry. And certainly that's exactly what's happening with Roger Craig after that six-yard run. And Brent Musburger just gave us an update a little bit ago with the Rams leading the Cowboys 21-17. Take a look. Troy Aikman with a touchdown pass. And now they lead the Rams 24-21. This high-powered, machine-like offense has gone over 400 yards for the day, J.B. This is second and four from the 14 of Atlanta. And Young takes it just inside the 10, and there's a late flag. And that's going to be against uh, Atlanta, personal foul. Looks like Marcus Cotton, number 51, all excited about playing this year, and he's getting his opportunity. Personal foul, late hit on number 51 defense. After this, is to the goal line and a first down. Marcus Cotton, as I said, excited about playing for the first time. He came in late to training camp, has not really played an awful lot this year. And it lets his excitement get a little carried away. No need to, be, no need to spear the quarterback when he's down that way. Good call. So the ball gets moved from the 10-yard line down to the five-yard line. We bring up a first and goal. Good job of San Francisco's. Good job of San Francisco's offensive line taking over late in the game when the offensive line has to step up and do something. Running the ball very well this time with Craig in this series of downs. First and goal from the five. Rapid. Down to the three. They've got a Donnie Brook going on between the Rams and the Cowboys. Let's check in with Brent Musburger. JV, quickly, an enormous turnaround in this one. The Dallas Cowboys now have jumped all over the Rams. They go ahead on this touchdown pass, and just moments ago, they recovered a fumble inside the five-yard line right now, up by three into the fourth quarter. Back to JV. All right, Brent. And, of course, that really would help the 49ers playoff chances if Dallas can give them a favor. No doubt their previous meeting between the 49ers and the Rams. Of course, the Rams came out on top. Second and goal from the three. Rath on the play action. And Steve Young brought down by Marcus Cotton, who did it legitimately this time. Steve Young did not fool him that time on the play action with Rathman. Trying to fool him with a play action. He slipped their tight end across 84, Britt Jones, but he's covered. Young just does whatever he can with it. Starts to backpedal a little bit, but the great speed of Marcus Cotton from USC does a great job of running him down. And you see the youthful enthusiasm of Bruce, number 93, and number 51, Marcus Cotton. guy right there is faster than most quarterbacks. You try to outrun him and uh, you get in trouble. Can I hear you say that he actually came to a meeting uh, this week in a little strange fashion? Yeah, he walked in with his cellular telephone on his hip, running his business from the locker room. <laughs> Mark has gotten Times that is. have changed. <laughs> Well, there's a timeout down on the field. Cool! It's been an entertaining game. And rather cool out here, too. <laughs> it is a little nippy. <laughs> San Francisco leading on top here, 20 to 10. 8.52 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Falcons came out and started throwing the ball from the beginning. They, they tried some trickery. They are a fourth and one. They threw the ball, faked a punt, and threw the ball.
Now, was Steve Young complaining that he couldn't hear? I don't think so. I think the, I think the Falcons called the timeout. Bobby, Bobby Butler called the timeout because they came out with both of their receivers to his side. Somebody didn't recognize the formation. There was only one defensive back over there for two receivers, and Bobby Butler quickly called the timeout. Just the thinking, let's not let it get out of hand. Double header day coming here next week on CBS Sports. It all begins, of course, with the NFL today at 12:30 Eastern Time. Then in Game One, we will see either the Falcons take on Minnesota or Dallas meeting Philadelphia. Then in Game Two, it's either the Giants in Denver or Phoenix and the Raiders. It all gets started at 12:30 Eastern Time with the NFL today. Buddy Ryan. And Jimmy Jones back at it again. Jimmy Johnson. Mounty I'm sure game. Jerry Jones will get involved in the action. Oh, he'll as be well. in the middle of it somewhere, too. <laughs> Third and goal from the 16. Rathman and Craig, the backs. to Rathman. And Rathman takes it inside the 10. Won't be enough for the first down. Boy, Troy Aikman really uncorking on the Rams. His fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. And Snake, we've seen him this year, and uh, Troy Aikman really going to be something. I think he is. We had him earlier this year and uh, against the Phoenix Cardinals and kid's got a strong arm. He's extremely tough. Stand in that pocket. As you say, he's going to be good. So Michael Kofer will attempt a 27-yard field goal. He's connected on 35 and 24. And this one is good. So San Francisco moves it out. By a score of 23 to 10. Back here in Atlanta, San Francisco on top, 23 to 10, thanks to that 27-yard field goal by Michael Kofer. Eight minutes remaining in the contest. Neon Deion Sanders trying to see if he can do a little something to spark some enthusiasm again. JB, that was a five-minute drive by the 49ers with only one pass in that drive. Seven runs, one pass. Offensive line doing a job late in the game when you're supposed to. Whichever way you want it, they can give it to you. And this one is taken by Andre Bruce, the up man. And Bruce plays the part of running back. And as we've been telling you throughout the game, the San Francisco 49er playoff picture looks like this. They can clinch a wild card position with the victory today and a loss by either. Minnesota Vikings tonight, Philadelphia Eagles earlier, and of course the Green Bay Packers. And Packers right now leading by a point over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hard-hitting battle there. And the Giants and Eagles all tied up at 17 apiece. On first and 10, Miller throws complete to Michael Haynes near the first down marker. Incomplete. Joining Ken Stabler and myself in the booth right now, Mr. Rankin Smith, Sr., the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, and obviously some very difficult times for you once again in your football tenure. Help us understand what you're trying to accomplish game plan-wise with the organization, Mr. Smith. Well, we are, of course, uh, 
going to be very shortly. Well, if not already, we're already looking for uh, some people. There will be uh, a search that will probably go on from now until after the... Uh, the season is over, as you know, we have restrictions in the National Football League for contacting people while uh, the season's in progress and we have to get permission and most of the people we'd be talking to would be somebody that's in the playoffs. And the same is true with college people. They have bowl games and most of the people we might be interested in would be... Uh, would, uh, also, we'd have a restriction as far as talking to them probably until that. But we'll be contacting people and this will be handled mostly by Ken Girock and, and uh, also my son Taylor Smith. Any truth to what was reported on the NFL today that Bill Walsh has already been offered the job by Ken Hurrock and your organization? No, that is not true. So that your coach uh, will possibly come from either the professional ranks as always as a possibility that it could be a very successful collegiate coach? Uh, that's true, and uh, we, we'll be, uh, we're not eliminating anybody, but we're going to go about it quietly, and uh, this will be productive during the month of December. Is there, is there any timetable, Mr. Smith? No, I think we'll certainly, as I say, we'll have to, we want the opportunity to talk to people, and we are restricted by virtue of the fact that the, that the season is still in progress, and also by virtue of the fact that the college season is still in progress, certainly with the bowl games, but uh, we, we'll come up with a man we think will do the job. Mr. Smith, you mentioned you won't eliminate anyone, but yet it's been reported that the current coaching staff, none of the assistants, would be considered. Well, that was our thinking as of now, and that's the, that's the way we're planning to go with it. Might that change if Jim Hannafin continues to do a good job? He certainly had the team playing extremely well in the first half. Any possibility that he could turn your mind around? Well, you never say never in our business, as you know. And, uh, but on the other hand, we today we've had what you might call fan day. We've had a lot of fun out there today, and they've... They've had some plays in there that uh, normally would not be in our curriculum, as you've seen. And, and uh, they played very well today, and the team played with intensity, and certainly the coaching staff deserves a lot of credit for what's happened here today. So safe to say there is the possibility, depending upon how things go the rest of the season. Well, we'll never rule out anything, but at this point in time, our search goes for out, of the, out of the organization. Coach, we want to wish you the best. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. Wish you the best, and hope you get things turned around here for the city of Atlanta and for your team. Thank you. The Atlanta fans deserve it. The best to you. Yeah, Mr. Rankin Smith Sr., the owner of the Atlanta Falcons, and we thank him very much for a very candid session with us. Well, there's something that's plagued this team for an awful long time, JB, from the beginning of the year has been drop passes. Miller has only completed like 47, 48 percent of his passes the last six games. But in defense, the young quarterback, they had 11 dropped last week. They really haven't been hanging on to the ball. Well, you're going to see right here, you're going to see a drop ball, something that should have been caught by the possession receiver. And here's, here's his reaction. He's had a lot of this this year, and it just, you can just see the frustration. So Scott Fulhay comes on to punt for the Falcons. 5-24 remaining in the contest. San Francisco on top, 23-10. to John Taylor back to receive, and he signals for the fair catch. 4.5 hang time on that Scott Fulhay punt of 36 yards. Coming up right after the game, the NFL Today post-game show with Brent and Irv. Now, besides the scores and highlights and, of course, post-game interviews, if the situation warrants, the New York studio will send you live to the exciting conclusion of another game. So the game's not over until you've seen the NFL Today post-game show coming up with Brent and Irv. George Seifert doesn't appear to be a very demonstrative type on the sidelines at all either. Very even keel, very even keel. His team is like that too. His team is very businesslike and they go about it in a very professional manner. Roger Craig in motion, first and 10. This is Rathman. Speaking of coaches, JB, I would, I would look for the Atlanta Falcons to get a real marquee name in here, a really very well-known person to help to help put people in the stands. Uh, Such as? I don't know, really, I don't know, you know, a, a marquee name, a very well-known, who knows, Chuck Knox is in trouble maybe a little bit in Seattle, uh, Gene Stallings' name has been thrown around, but I think it has to be a name that will help pe put, put people in the stands. The graphic early in the game showed a 57% uh, capacity rate in here, and I think they've got to get people here. One way to do that is put people on the field uh, that can play, and another way is to put a good marquee name coach in here. Well, I talked to the Redskins coaching staff this week, and maybe not a marquee name, but Joe Bugle, the offensive uh, line coach 
assistant head coach of the offense, really wants his job as well. Roger Craig running across the 20 to about the 22-yard line, four-yard gain on the play. And the clock continues to run, 4.15 remaining in the contest. Well, Roger Craig certainly has led by example today. Good tough yards. Gets his 100 yards, and Rice gets his yards, Taylor gets his, Brent Jones, 15 for 91 for Roger Craig today, as you see right there. And, of course, their receivers are going to get theirs. Their quarterbacks, both high-percentage passers, and it's just a machine-like operation on offense. Third and six from the 22. Craig has the first down. There's his 100. Well, this team we talked about being the best team of the 80s. How do they compare to other teams in other sports in the 80s? And certainly you got to come up with the Los Angeles Lakers. <laughs> you bet. There they are, the Lakers, Yankees, Flyers, and the Niners. And yeah, then you got the other side of the coin. Boy, not a pretty side either. Falcons tied with the Lions for the worst record of the 80s. Right now, the Lions, though, I mean, they're playing some good football. That silver stretch, Wayne Fonts is committed to it. Rodney Pete is playing well. And the Lions are giving the Saints a fit right now, leading in that contest late in the fourth quarter. Roger Craig in motion on first down. This is Rathman. And Rathman pulling the head for five yards. <laughs> I guess they've tried to dissect every which way about how San Francisco wins. Yeah, what makes this team play the best and where do they play the best? On the road, at home, what time, <laughs> all that. You see here, 12 straight, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard game wins. I think this team could, could win if you lined up at midnight. I mean, I don't think it matters what time <laughs> they play. They're a good football team. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. As we take a look at the crowd here, thinning out, considerably so. The eyes there say it. Fans did have something to cheer about for the first half. Hasn't been that way the second half. It's been all San Francisco. On second down, Rathman, a gain of one. And we're moving toward the two-minute mark of the contest. With the 49ers leading it by 13. 3-10 here, but folks, hold on. Coming up at the conclusion of this game, the NFL Today postgame show with Brenton Irv, and perhaps you may be in for a treat. If we've got a close contest going on somewhere around the country, Brenton Irv will take you there. That'll be coming up at the conclusion of this contest here, so stick around and see what happens. Two minutes remaining in the contest. San Francisco has been all their second half. Third and four. Craig. Flag on the play as Craig is roped, brought down from behind by Tim Green. And Tim Green has had himself a pretty decent day. Notice the Falcon players wearing number 73 on their uniform in black, tribute to their fallen colleague. Illegal formation, only six minutes in the line of scrimmage. refused, fourth down. That fallen colleague, of course, uh, Ralph Norwood, who died tragically in the car crash this week by Mr. Soul. Jim Hannafin. Tough job. Tough job coming in as interim coach. You're playing the best team in the league. Uh, trying to get your team ready to play. A very young team at all the skill positions. And an awfully tough job for him to come in, like you said, at the top. Uh, a no-win situation. Barry Helton on the punt to Deion Sanders. That one run out of bounds. Well, once again, the Falcons find themselves in a position of aiming for the number one pick in the NFL draft. Now, you look at you look at Atlanta. What does Atlanta need? Atlanta needs a, a good pass rusher from a down lineman. Maybe some more speed on the outside. Detroit, same thing. Everybody needs impact players on defense. The Jets are having their problems. There's always a need for great offensive linemen. Just depends on what the team needs. And there's a former number one, Tony Casillas. 
fourth year player out of Oklahoma. First and 10 for Atlanta, ball at its own 17. 143 remaining in the contest, trailing by 13. And Chris Miller throws it complete to George Thomas. Well, San Francisco is just going to line up in their what they call a prevent type defense, James. It's a, a very, very deep zone. The defensive backs and safeties will line up deeper than normal. The linebackers will line up deeper than normal and just play deep zones designed not to give up the big play. Second and two. Ball at the 25. John Settle, the lone back. Throws it complete. First down. And Sean Collins, good second effort, taking it to the first down. Dallas. Dallas and the Rams, still a good game there. Let's check in with Brent Musburger and find out what's going on. JV, it should be some post-game show after you get wrapped up because the Rams have now pulled back to within three after a turnover. Everett to Brown lights them up. The Packers have just scored. Eagles and Giants are tied. Back to JB. And back here, Brent, we've got a, a broken play that still results in some yardage gain for the Falcons. Seven-yard pass play. There he is running it from the line of scrimmage. 47 seconds left. Tipped pass right here, that deep zone. Here it comes right here. There it is. It's docked up in the air by Keith Jones, 38. Collins with the reception. And intercepted. Johnny Jackson. So San Francisco will run the clock out and pick up their ninth consecutive road victory. San Francisco came into today's contest having won 19 of their last 21 in a row. It will be 20 of 22. Well, Chris Miller in a tough situation. Your team's behind. It's been that way all year for him. Everybody knows you're going to have to throw the football. It's against that big pass rush. Those deep zones, tough way to have to finish up. That's my favorite play. As a quarterback, favorite play. Take Paul. the ball, kneel down, call win the game. And that's exactly what San Francisco does. And I guess that picture says it all there. Falcons, hopeful, prayerful for better things to come. Not today, as Jim Hannafin is greeted by Matt Millen. Boy, certainly you um, have to give a lot of credit to Jim Hannafin for what he attempted to do brought some fun back into it. Had nothing to lose, came out with some specially tight plays on fourth and one. He threw a halfback pass on a punt. They threw a fake punt pass for the first down and put some excitement in it, but you can do that when you have nothing to lose. And don't forget coming up, the NFL Today postgame show back in New York, Brent and Irv will bring you up today with all the scores in action. So that does it here from Atlanta. San Francisco on top, 23 to 10. For Ken Stabler, this is James Brown saying so long from Atlanta.